somewhat not blowing really ridiculous. Still, still pretty high. Um, we just gotta take any opportunity we can. We, we really don't have a choice right ahead, so. Gotta get it ground up so we can keep feeding cattle. Um, not that any of you guys watch Cattle Market Summary, it's probably my favorite YouTube uh, channel in a business sense more than anything. But it, it's April 2nd or 3rd today, gotta look at my phone. It, but if you're in the feeder business, it is. I, I haven't been able to watch this full episode, so I mean, they're just, just downright depressing. Uh, completely depressing. But, that's how life goes. Uh, so, kind of what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to start talking about why I bought uh, a, a feed, you know, an auger truck, an auger box that's on a truck. Uh, vertical mixer. Now, for, you know, mine's a mine's a four auger mixer. It's not a real mixer, or paddle mixer, or whatever. Uh, but just kind of, I had a vertical mixer, and this is what replaced it. So, just so you don't realize, uh, there's a our auger wagon. It's got four augers in it, mainly uh, made in silage wagons, kind of, it's our backup feed wagon is what it is. Uh, right now it needs some work done to it because it doesn't like mixing up really a uh, forage dense ration. So it was, oh, 2014, I want to say, I bought moved back in 12, started running calves that fall, so it was probably 2014, and I was feeding calves. Well, at the time, I had a vertical mixer, it was a harsh mixer, single screw vertical, uh, it was actually built by Artsway Manufacturing. They didn't build very many of them. Uh, we bought it really cheap uh, in the drought. Uh, we were just trying to trying to feed some cows with it. Yeah, I, I don't know. It is something. It was not a good purchase. It was good in the fact that it kind of got got us going. Towards, you know, getting some feed equipment, but what was happening, and I got into this in the video of why I bought a hay grinder, a roto grind hay grinder, so uh, if you want more backstory, you can go to that video and see there. Uh, it just wasn't built very well, and on a vertical mixture, it takes a long time processing hay, and vertical mixture guys are going to argue that one with you, but that's just the flat truth. I've had three of the damn things. Uh, twin screw and two single screws, and it takes the same amount of time, no matter what, to process hay to the length that a hay grinder will, will do it. It takes, you know, it takes a fair amount of time. You know, I want to say 10 minutes, if not, not more, to process your hay to a that's not the point of this video. At the time, the only thing I had is I had uh, an old 966 that was sitting on the vertical mixer, and in this I'm in this tractor right now. This is our little 5510, and that's what I loaded the truck with. That's what I was loading everything with doing all our little load of work. And we can actually, and that's, makes a great loader tractor. I mean, I got my little, little reverser right down here. Makes great loader tractor. So, I was pretty equipment poor. The thing about the vertical was, 
the scales did not work on it. They just were terrible, absolutely terrible. I put new scale heads on and all new load, load bars on it. It only had three. And this is where the bad design comes in to place. It had a walking beam axle on each side, but instead of the load cell being on where the axle pivoted, they were on the back two tires, the back two uh, on those walking beams. Each side had two, two hubs, and the load cells were on the back ones. And then the third load cell was the tongue. Well, the problem with that is, and you can see where they've gotten away from that on a lot of machines, is if you're on anything that's not perfectly level concrete, it doesn't, it doesn't weigh correctly at all. And you even have a variation when it's perfectly flat. Because as that machine moves, those axles go like that and it'll put weight, more weight on the front and not the back and so that, that cell isn't picking it up. Our tractor was underpowered. Our load cells were, you know, there's just no way to get scales on it. It was, it was pretty much breaking me and it was breaking the people that I was feeding cattle for because, you know, you couldn't tell exactly what was going out of the machine. Uh, it was a bad time. The cattle market was just dropping like a rock at the time. It was just, it seems to be a pretty common factor anymore. And so I, I had to make the call. I needed something. I needed something that had good working scales. Now I don't have any problems with vertical mixers. I truly would like to have one around just for feeding cows with. I think it would be great for that. Uh, but you have to look at the one that I had put a pretty bad taste in my mouth because I had to completely take out the auger, redo all the planetary and bearings in there and put all new bolts in it because the thing was in such bad shape. It, I mean, it was just putting those bales in there. It's just working it apart and it's just destroying itself. So first vertical I ever had put a real bad taste in my mouth. Didn't want another one. But I would have bought another one, but I had three sets of calves in my pen that I'm trying to feed. And I'm still using this, I'm still using this truck. Or I'm still using that, that vertical, you know, it, and it was a bad deal. Bad, bad deal. I needed something right away. I was having to loan a tractor to grind my hay with. I was having to, my neighbor had a 4630 and I was loaning it, from, you know, borrowing it from him to grind hay with. So I didn't have a spare tractor. And I decided what we were going to do is we were just going to get a feed truck. And feed trucks are pretty common around here. We went down to BJM in Hereford, Texas. And we were looking at a feed truck there. It was pretty close to the truck that I have. It was a little bit newer. I think it was, I don't know if it was a 40, it may have been a 4700. Or in, I think it was a 4700, mine's a 4900. They had an old BJM box on it, one that they built themselves, you know. Old box on it, three auger box. This is how old it was. It was, Chuck was in rough, it wasn't in great shape. But it, it wasn't necessarily just terrible. It, it was just, it was all right. The box was in terrible shape, terrible shape. And they uh, they told me the whole cab wires were just hanging everywhere. They told me they're like, no, uh, we'll we'll take twenty seven thousand and we'll put a new auger in the bottom of, of it for you. And then you gotta you gotta pay us to haul it to you. You know, another three four hundred dollars, something something like that. And we went through their old boneyard. That's about all I could afford. Was that? Was that? And I really couldn't afford that. So on the way back from Hereford, it's three hours down there. Me and my dad went, and I, my mom actually went with us too. Which never goes anywhere with us. Um, on the way back, I he, my dad's like, "Hey, you need to call the guy we bought the feed mixture from." So we got our vertical mixture out of Arizona. 
100 rescinded at all. It, it fed cows, but they didn't do anything else. So I called them up and I said, hey, I need, a, I need a feed truck. What do you have? Within a couple hours, he had four, four or five feed trucks emailed to me, pictures of them. Uh, two trucks just like the one I have, identical. One was 25, one was this. And when was, we were sitting there looking at the augers in it, and the augers were in fantastic shape. The box was in great shape. They wanted 20000 for it. Uh, since it was way down in Arizona and freight was still really high then, they cost us $22,000 to buy that truck. And called my bank because I don't have 22,000. Didn't have 22,000 then. I sure shit don't have 22,000 now. And they brought, loaned me the money. And I had that truck here a little over, a little over a week. They pulled the truck in. What happened is there's some dairies down there and the guy took a dairy buyout. And so the truck had been sitting for for uh, a couple years, just been sitting there, nothing done to it, and the transmission ended up having a hard time going in reverse. Well, they just pulled the transmission and just completely put a, a remand in it for me, no additional cost. So I mean, they're good people. Uh, I got it through Dykstra Equipment down there in Costa Grande. Really, really good people. And I like dealing with them, I really do. But that's that's why I ended up with a four auger box because number one, I was it saves me money to grind hay to begin with. Uh, I grind the hay, it's faster mixing, faster loading times, and it saves me fuel. It saves me a tremendous amount of diesel to grind my hay instead of just loading bales into the, the box and going from there. Now I'm trying to get a smaller size hay to go into a calf ration. If it was just for cows, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be grind hay at all. I'd rather have it a little coarse. And that coarse hay will actually slow it down in the gut. So, but for just feeding, it is faster to grind hay. Well, if I'm gonna go ahead and pre-grind the hay, then I feel at the time, you know, now you can buy a, a vertical box. You couldn't get one locally at all for anything. Now we can, because we've had a, a mixer place move in, who's really, really reliable, good company to work with. Um, they sell lots of mixtures, but we didn't have that option. The nearest place was three hours away and they primarily only worked on horizontal boxes. So, my dad had run horizontal boxes. It's just, it's what we knew. We'd had, he'd had one, he'd worked with them. I'm making a mess right now. And I went with a horizontal box and I've never looked back. And to be quite honest with you, if I were to buy a new box, it would be a horizontal box. Um, now if we get into a drought, which we're in a drought now, and we have to end up feeding our cows, then I, I might buy a, a vertical, a truck mounted vertical to feed my cows until I either sell all my cows or, or God lets it start raining again. And then I'd probably sell the truck then, just because I could mix uh, silage and really shitty hay, and I wouldn't need to sit here and grind it. But where I'm in a, a feed yard setting already, already grinding, I'm set up to grind hay. And an auger box is just more economical for me, and they're, they're somewhat, they're fairly, fairly reasonable. And I don't have to, they're, they're so common that putting scales on them and fixing scales on them is pretty simple. And after, after that fiasco with the one I had, and actually, I've had trouble.
trouble with every vertical I've ever run with there being a problem with scales on them. Now that doesn't mean it's the it's the design itself. The first one it was the design. The second one I had didn't have it very long. They were just it was here while they were fixing one of mine. They were putting new augers in the bottom of that wagon. And the scales on it didn't work. Really worth a damn. And it didn't uh it didn't have it didn't even have a scale head when it got here. It was supposed to have scales on it. And it's just kind of one of those things like come on guys. And then the cable, one of the cables was frayed. And it's just but you'll notice on verticals is that that weight will fluctuate. If there's anything off balance in that on those things, that weight will fluctuate up and down a couple hundred, you know, hundred pounds, two hundred pounds. Well, over time that's a lot of damn money if you're not, you know, if you're not considering it, you know, being high one time and low the other time, but you know that that can actually lead to a problem. The third vertical, some of the very first videos I have, <coughs> I had a brand new coon sitting on one of these old five ton army trucks. Scales didn't work on it. Uh, for like the first three or four days, they didn't work on it. Then one day they just started working. I mean, that thing was bouncing way all over the place and they wouldn't come out and work on it. They were busy. Uh, the company was just starting out, and then one day it just started working. I don't know. It, it just really, it just one of those kind of things. I just haven't had good luck with them, and that's enough reason for me to not, not want to buy one and just run it in my yard. I, I would have if I were to buy one, I'd buy a new one. I would not buy a used vertical ever. I don't think I'd ever buy one at this point. I would buy a, I'd buy a new one, a new coon or something like that. You know, that's not gonna kill you to buy it, but they're still good machines. Uh, I really like the one that Cal Camp 87 has. I would probably get one about that size, and if not on a on a wagon, at least I wouldn't mind putting one on a wagon. I could put it behind that 7810. Or this uh, 7800 feet cows with the Dutley. The benefit to having it on a truck, though, for us, uh, any vertical that we would buy would go on a truck. Would be because you know we're we're in the dry desert here, and so if we had a, gotten a situation where we had to feed all of our cows, I would really prefer not to pull all of our cows into one spot, even though it would be easier because water is not that plentiful, so everything's off the wells. And, you know, a well goes down and you got 500 cows there. That takes a lot of water. So we would want them spread out in a few different places and wherever those cows are, through experience on a dry lot situation, in a drought here, the dust is extremely harmful to cows. I bought cows in it that were in a drought and they just, fell apart and died. Uh, the dust, dust will kill a cow. You won't, you wouldn't think it, but enough dust will kill a cow. And you can keep feeding them and keep feeding them and keep feeding them, but it'll just, you know, it's just like a human, they'll get sick. So, and the other part of that is the longer that drought persists, the longer those cows are gonna go into a dry lot situation and then they're gonna beat the ground off. And it takes a long time for our grass to come back here, multiple years. And if we have, we still have areas from, it's been about five years, so this will be going on five years ago, that are in bad shape from that last drought. And now we're, we're looking at another drought, it's, it's not looking good. But I hope that explains why I went with a horizontal box at the time. Because it, as I was growing, you know, I didn't have a lot of equipment, and so you'll have people say, well, that's just another motor, and yes, that's very honest. I ended up 
having to have that motor rebuilt um, at one point because there was a there was a crack in the air filter housing. There's there's a secondary hose that goes to the back side of the air filter housing that had broken off, and so I was pulling just straight sand and dust and hay into my engine, and it just it, it destroyed the motor. Uh, in about two years time and it, it was back where you couldn't see it so it you know it's just fun times i will say this after that experience i had the my brother was going to pull out the motor and he was mechanic at the time and he knew this machine shop that did great work and it was only going to cost me five thousand dollars five six thousand dollars well that's a pretty good deal on a rebuilt motor it cost me 15 by the time the motor was in I could have bought a brand new motor from International for 13,000 had it a week later and because I priced it when the motor blew it took me a year to get my damn truck back having my brother do it and it cost me several thousand 